All right, I wanted to get on here quickly after the game. The Washington Commanders are telling the NFL, we are here, we are real. We are the Houston Texans of last year, yet somehow they look even better than the Houston Texans looked last year at this point in the season. There are a couple teams that it's shocking that they are as good as they are. The Washington Commanders and the Minnesota Vikings kind of come to mind right away at 4-1 and and 5-0, and but the Commanders put the NFL on notice, and I'm going to tell you in this video – about why that was. We're going to start with kind of a big, like kind of macro picture, 30,000 foot view, if you will, on why the Commanders win against the Browns was even more impressive than originally thought. And we're then going to go down into the nitty gritty. And of course, I'll have good stuff for you the whole way across. All right. The first one that I need to talk about this more macro thing. I mean, yes, of course, we could talk about Jaden Daniels and his efficiency. We could talk about the offense and how basically you don't even need a punter. We could talk about all those things. But I want to talk about the defense. Before I get into it, if you're new to this channel, uh, we love talking football. We're Lions fans. You see the Hutch jersey back there. We don't mince any words about that, but we love the NFL, especially teams that the national media seems to ignore a little bit. And the Washington Commanders have not been central to the national media a long time. They play in a division where they are often overlooked on the national side of things. So we want to give you some news on that. But this defense today, I understand it was against the Cleveland Browns. I understand it was against Deshaun Watson. No jokes. I'm not making any jokes about Deshaun Watson, but I could. All right. I understand all of that. But this defense was absolutely phenomenal today. I said in the video last week when I was talking about the commanders that you have a defensive-minded head coach in Dan Quinn. And if he, that defense can catch up to what the offense is doing, this team can be scary. I understand that there's still some pieces missing on the defensive end, but you flashed and showed the ability to have it. Total yards given up today, 212. That's, that's crazy. I don't care if you're playing the Cleveland Browns. I don't care if you're playing a college team. 212 yards is such a small amount of yards to give up. On the flip side, you gain 434. This is the time, this is a game in the fifth game of the season where I saw the most balanced, well-rounded attack. I talk about this all the time. Are you playing complementary football? And the Washington Commanders in this game 100% absolutely played complementary football. And that's one of the things that we have to look at and say, all right, that's a big deal. Like, that is a big deal. When you look at their first four weeks of the regular season, uh, the first three weeks, they didn't. All right, they played bad defense and bad offense in week one against the Bucks. They played okay offense and okay defense in week two versus the Giants. They played great offense, bad defense against the Bengals, and then the last two weeks it has been fully complementary football. First against a what I believe to be a good team in the Arizona Cardinals, and now against what is showing to not be a good team, even though they were a playoff team last year, in the Cleveland Browns, all right? To give you an idea of how much better it was against the Browns, in the first four weeks of the NFL season, the Commanders ranked 26th in total yards. They were giving up 357. Against the Browns, like I said, 212. Passing defense was a little better. They were giving up 220. That was 21 in the NFL. 21 in the NFL. What about rushing defense? They were 23rd, giving up 136 yards, all right, on the ground. In this game, they gave up 108 passing yards, all right, which is phenomenal. They still gave up 104 rushing yards. There's still some things that have to be picked up there, but some of that might be just saying, look, we know we have some weaknesses in the secondary, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about that. Again, when we look at this, all right, I've said it before, 212 total yards, 108 passing, 104 rushing. This was a dominant performance, all right? This was a dominant performance. And when you look at it side by side, you get to see just how dominant it was. We're going to go back there in just a second, so stay posted. But I want to give you some more of the 
um, micro, uh, or in other words, things that I thought were good and continued to once again tell the NFL we're for real, we're a playoff caliber team. And the first one is that Jaden Daniels continues to be the best rookie quarterback in the NFL. He does. He, in this game, he was not 82%. No, he was not. All right, he was 14 of 25. All right, we can look at this again. For a touchdown and a pick, he took three sacks, but he still threw for 238 yards, and then he ran for more. He ran, carried the ball 11 times for 82 yards, but he found ways not to take multiple big hits. He took a couple of hits, but he did not take a ton of big hits. I will add on top of that that Terry McLaurin, by the way, he was a very tough catch, but a touchdown away from making this line even better. What I love about Jaden Daniels is he completed a pass to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different wide receivers. Yes, he gave the most targets to Terry McLaurin and Zach Ertz, by the way. They both got eight. But he is willing and ready to say, I'm going to throw it to everybody. That tells me he already has a great grasp of the offense. He has an understanding of what the defense is doing, and he's taking down or he's taking what the defense is giving him. All right. Next kind of micro why it was so good and so impressive. Everybody talks about Cliff Kingsbury. Everybody talks about Jane Daniels. And I mean, last week, the Cardinals players were talking crap about how it's a pretty simple system over there. It's kind of college uh, mundane. Then they hung 42 on them. But in this one, simple systems sometimes work, but simple systems don't just stop utterly the best defensive player in football. And that's what Miles Garrett is. And that's what he was last year winning defensive player of the year. But in this game, he was not. In fact, the commanders were so good. They were so good that Garrett didn't even show up in the stat sheet. He didn't even show up. No tackles, no sacks, nothing. For the reigning defensive player of the year. That is phenomenal. All right? That is phenomenal. We'll, we can talk more about what happened and why that happened. But first, let's just go on from there. All right. Next one and final kind of micro thing. What helps a rookie quarterback? What helps to be an efficient passing game? A good running game. And the commander's run game continues to flex its muscles as one of the NFL's best. In this game, just to give you an idea, a lot of people carried the ball. Let's go ahead and look at this again. All right, Jaden Daniels, Austin Eckler, Jeremy McNichols, Brian Robinson. Brian Robinson came into this with a banged-up knee, and it showed. They put him in in short yardage, but I don't think he got a carry in the second half of this football game. So he goes for 7 for 18. That's your lead running back. All right, but McNichols and Austin Eckler are like, hey, we got this. Don't worry. So you have your running backs that go six for 67, seven for 44, seven for 18. You have the ball to McLaurin. Ooh, that was a mistake. All right, but um, Jaden Daniels says, I got this too. He's, um, he's the leading rusher. This is a rushing attack that is looking like the Baltimore Ravens with a young Lamar Jackson, except, and I've said this in almost every video when I talk about Jane Daniels, Jane Daniels is already a better passer right now than Lamar Jackson. I'm not saying he's a better passer than Lamar Jackson was as rookie. I'm saying he's a better passer right now. Jaden Daniels is starting to show that he is one of the best passers, throwers of the football in the NFL already. Now, I know it's a small sample size. I understand it's only five games, but at the same time, when are we going to start realizing this dude's for real? And when they stop the pass, fine, I'll take the run. All right, when they stop the run, he takes the pass. If they cover it short, he goes deep. If they cover it deep, he takes the check down. He is a very, very smart quarterback, and I am truly, truly amazed. If I'm a Commanders fan, I'm saying, please stay healthy. This is so much fun to watch. They already have this team that didn't on paper going into the year look like it was going to have quite enough talent to make a serious run at the playoffs or a serious run at the NFC East, and it just shows you what the right coach and the right offensive system can do, and more importantly, the right quarterback and how that can make a team look phenomenal. 
and now the players are growing. They are getting more and more confident, and there are a lot of good players in the NFL. And when you're put in a position to succeed, if you are put in the right spot, a lot of players will succeed, and that's what the Washington Commanders players are doing. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoy some of these. If you watch through this whole video, hit that subscribe button so you can get more info and let us, you know, and it'll give you a little ding and let you know when the next video is up. And hopefully you check out some of the other ones we have too. Thanks for watching. See ya.